you. Did you bring up Hidden Resilient or did she bring it up? Well, um, yeah, I, I, I brought you up. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, not, not in a bad way, I mean, but I don't know why. But did you know I was banned when you brought me up? Uh, yes, I did. Brent was everywhere. As soon as he saw the title, hey, what such and such was right there next to me. I was questioned whether I was a fan, was told to have a positive experience, was told that certain guests take issue with me asking about Zachary Taylor McGinnis and that I might be banned because if guests aren't happy, they might not come back. Officer Tate and Christy. Mike Bradley was in the background and Geek Culture 101 was literally next to me when Christy approached me the second time. Emphasis on second time. Stephanie Dana heard what Karen said and confirmed that I was telling the truth. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Greek culture chimes in. I'm sorry, but I don't see how anyone can say Brent downplayed it. Wow. Didn't see what happened specifically inside. Had heard ish heard of issues prior. I witnessed the full event in the hall. As I said previously, he and I have had our differences over ASJ, but I felt bad for the guy. And I felt bad for the guy and he was visibly shaken. If he didn't convey how intense it was. Brent fam says ridiculous that people think I lied about what happened in the hallway. You were literally right next to me when when what I described in this channel happened. Stephanie Dana heard what happened inside and confirmed that I said was to be accurate. Yo, Brent, you like <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> now. All right. Here's the thing, right? His Brent part comes towards the end of the interview. <laughs> OK, it's at the the the, the tippy 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 end, and it lasts for about 12 minutes. All right. So this is the pre this is the preface. And then we'll get into it and then we'll come back to Brent's segment because it lasted for about 12 minutes. All right. No worries. Um, yeah. So I had seen a couple of the videos that you post. So for context purposes, a vendor has been trying to get in contact with me for since he saw Brent's story. OK, since they saw Brent's story, they're like, hey, I need to talk to you. <laughs> what he's saying ain't accurate. We need to talk. OK, I'm like, all right, man. Cool. No problem. Um, at first, I had to verify his, you know, that he was truly indeed at Ranger Stop. <laughs> OK, OK, I had to had to verify that. Um, and then. He gave a lot of information. He doesn't just talk about Brent. Remember the person who was accused of being who was accused that they lied about being autistic. I we I did some digging. We did you dig, bro. You like to dig. I did some hella digging on him. So that's going to come up. I don't know if Stephanie is here to uh, verify that. We talked about Karen Ashley. We talked about Austin St. John. We talked about a lot of stuff that happened specifically at Ranger Stop that everyone else is scared to talk about. No worries. Um, yeah, so I had seen a couple of the videos that you posted and have just seen a couple inconsistency, inconsistencies that I've seen with just the, the stories I've heard from the dinner, the stories I've heard with Christy, I believe her name is, the girl who was accused of um, commenting on somebody's autism, and the biggest thing being the incident with Brett in the hallway. Um, so I was vending out there all weekend, and so the way he explained what happened was kind of nuts, because me and my brother who were there watching it all go down, um, were immediately, we saw him, like, we were like, oh my gosh, that's the guy, because a am resilient, the name was traveling all over the show from <laughs> even, even Thursday, you know? <laughs> um, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I know we want to get to Brent. What do you mean Henry resilient, the name was traveling throughout the show, even on Thursday? All right, <laughs> so that's that's the imp the opening. We're gonna start right here. All right, we're gonna come out the gate with the autistic person and just basically putting the hammer like 
to this guy in this story. All right. What does Fairy Todd say? Uh, Brent is nothing without JDF. Now that JDF, he is gone. He needs some sort of redemption arc. He can't complain about JDF anymore. Now it's David. Ooh. That's a truthful statement. All right. So we're going to start with the autistic uh, kid. All right. Let's go. The autistic accusations or the, the false, you know, accusations of not being autistic or whatever. Um, now, obviously, this is what you choose to do with the name I give you. Obviously, there is a gentleman who goes to the show. Now, I'm not doxing this person, so you I would never give you his name, even though he's easily to find. And maybe Stephanie Dana can confirm if, if this is the guy that was accused of not being autistic. Every single year. And my first encounter with this guy was he came up to my booth, saw that I for for sale, and was like, oh my gosh, it's even signed. How much do you want for it? And I offered the guy $400 for it and the vendor for how much do you want? And he turned me down. Um, and I was like, okay. I looked at my the same guy who's been with me for years of the show, and I call his bluff, and I'm like, okay, 300 bucks. The guy immediately, like, goes white in the face, doesn't want to buy it anymore, and there's no pressure. But since then, every single year has made it a point to want to tell me that he's saving up the money for it. And that was the only reason why, like, I even know who they're talking about, is uh-huh. because I've seen... I've seen the actions of what he's been doing throughout the entire show. He tries to get so involved to the point to where he's not even a volunteer. He's just a patron who pays for the dinner. He's constantly posting on his Instagram page, on his Facebook page about needing GoFundMe money, but somehow has money for a three-day stay and a dinner pass for the VIP dinner. You know what I mean? It's it's very weird. Every single year, he's wearing a birthday sash, and it's not even his birthday. I've like looked. I've done my own research because I'm like... Looking at it, and I'm like, it's one thing if, if Henry, your birthday was. This is crazy that every year you wear a birthday sash, you put the GoFundMe up now. Look, what this guy is saying, verify it. <laughs> I was like, let me check. Because, like, when people, when people tell you things that you want to, that you, that can be fact checked, you typically want to fact check it. All right. But uh, salute to Trey Dodson. Welcome to the Resilient Army. <laughs> And thank you for gifting a membership, Trey. Thank that was so generous of you, man. Appreciate that. Um, so we can we can run this back just a little bit, so you guys can f- hear the full scope of this. This guy is breaking down who this person is. Sure. He's just a patron who pays for the dinner. He's constantly posting on his Instagram page, on his Facebook page about needing GoFundMe money, but somehow has money for a three day stay and a dinner pass for the VIP dinner. You know what I mean? It's it's very weird. Every single year he's wearing a birthday sash and it's not even his birthday. I've like looked, I've done my own research because I'm like looking at it and I'm like, it's one thing if, if Andrew, your birthday was on Friday and you went to the show on Saturday and you wore your sash. I don't care. But we're talking like weeks ago. Now it's like, and why do you only wear it on the Saturday? Because you want people to notice you. So the reason why I'm like really curious as to whether or not like uh, people are I mean, I guess it's not even curious. The reason I'm upset is because they don't even know. Like, they haven't looked into who this guy is. He's even posted on his own public Facebook, vi- uh, like Facebook, videos of him calling himself a liar in, like, a 20-minute long clickbait video where he's like, hey, guys, I can't be trusted. I can't. Like, I'm just a liar. I lie to my friends all the time. I lie about everything. Can and you send me that? Yeah, I can send it to you. It's on his public one, but I'll absolutely send it to you. I went and found this shit. He was like, it was on this public one. So I go, I find the video. I'm like, okay, let's, let's see. Let's see what this is about. Okay. Let's see this. I am. Is this the guy that was accused of not being autistic? Stephanie Dana, can you confirm? Just put yes, it's him or no, it's not him. An addiction. I. I am uh, a liar. And before you think I'm kidding and that this was all made in fun, I'm not. And it wasn't. I um, have been lying a lot to everyone about so many ridiculous things. Um, So many stories that I've told people about my life are either completely fabricated or uh, have a shred of truth to it that is expounded upon by years and years of my 
create um, my creativity. Um, but I now, don't want to do that. Anymore. Here's about now he's about to confess to some of the things that he's lied about. This is this is an even bigger revelation. If this is truly the guy and according to my sources, this is the guy that was accused of not being autistic because not only does he that we do we have this concrete proof of him talking about how he lies and Stephanie Dana said, yes, this is him. Um, there is more proof that the vendor was like, this is what happened to me this year anymore. And, and that's really why I'm making this video and I hope you see it. It's so hard to look at this little camera lens. Um, I, uh, I've lied about places I've been, things I've done, people I've met, situations I've been in, all for the sake to seem relevant in conversation or to seem like I'm not just some boring friend of yours that has one or two um, interesting stories. But like I said, I'm making this to hold myself accountable and to have others do that as well, that I don't do that again. Because I want people to know um, who I really am and what I've really done and the things that are really important to me. Now, people can say, hey, at least he's admitting his, admitting his lies. That's that's all good and dandy. However, sometimes just because you admit to lying here doesn't mean you're, like, you're done lying. OK, because he's addicted to the attention he gets when he lies. That's what these people thrive on. Attention. OK, well, if I lie about this, I can get some great attention from people. Maybe they could farm sympathy, empathy or even money in, in some people's cases just by lying. Um, but the reason why that video is so important is because on Saturday, first thing when the doors open, homie runs up to me with his iPhone out with the text, I'm nonverbal and autistic. How much are your items? And I'm like, I looked at my. I tell him how much they are, and he proceeds to go up the hall with that same thing, showing it to everybody. I'm like, wasn't he just talking to us yesterday? Wasn't he just talking to us like a lot yesterday? And then the same Saturday night at the dinner, he is so vocal and so loud. And of course, I'm not like a doctor, so I can't like tell you the forms of autism to whether or not it can turn someone nonverbal based on, you know, the stressors of the show. Um, but why wouldn't you leave then? If you were so stressed out, why would you go to the dinner? You know what I mean? If you were so stressed out and he's telling people it's not that he is becoming nonverbal. It's he's completely nonverbal. Now, I look this guy up. I mean, to be nonverbal, to have his accomplishments, uh, if his job history and academic history is true. Uh, that's that's very interesting. But Javier said, yeah, that's him. He stole my Lunar Ranger Morpher. All right. So this guy, I guess, is problematic at these cons. So uh, accusing him of not being autistic may have been the right the right thing, according to this guy who's like, look, last year he was talking. He was fine. He was this. He was that. And he's about to keep going with the story of what this guy did at Ranger Stop. And I'm like, OK, well, then you shouldn't be having a conversation with me on Sunday like we did. So it was very weird. And even at the dinner, when they were like thanking everybody, he at one point, they thanked the cameraman and who's going to hold the camera for the cameraman to get his shot. He stands up, grabs the like full $2,000 almost looking setup. It could be less, but I'm talking about like, we're talking about like a thing in your hand, the full camera and starts zooming around and walking around the dinner. And I'm like, this is, this is a lot for someone who's not even a staff volunteer, you know, junior, anything. Um, so to say that she was questioning him, I don't know if that actually happened or not, but we actually have to look at the guy, too. I feel like the guy who is involved in the actual situation, this guy is known to lie. And the fact that he even posted a video of himself saying that he's a liar is super weird. All right. <laughs> All right. That was me, guys. Like, I'm doing so much uh, stuff. I think Grandpa had just arrived. But now he's about to talk about the VIP dinner and how it goes. Uh, and touch on the whole 
72 people, um, whatchamacallit. And I appreciate the people that are here. If you do me a favor, like the stream. I know some of y'all are ninja watching and will never like the stream. <laughs> but uh, for those who are not ninja watching, like the stream. And then the last part would be the dinner. Um, I, I think I heard you say something about somebody saying like 80 people snuck into the dinner. Brother, there was only so many tables and only eight people could sit to a table. I, if anyone quote unquote snuck in, the dance opens up after the dinner is over. So if you think that you can, it's like the same people who think that they sneak in like a bag of M&Ms into the movie theater and they think that, look, we got away with it. It's the dance party was open to everybody as soon as the dinner ended. I think the dinner is only like an hour and a half long. Oh, and so that's where you get the whole 80 people snuck in. Oh, so, yeah, exactly. This is not even sneaking in. The dance party's open to everyone. The security at that point, it's Saturday night. Let's party. We're not trying to bust people's, you know, balls for it. You know what I mean? They actually had security people walk around and check wristbands for if you were sitting at the table. They were at the um, buffet, you know, line too, just double checking. They weren't like in, intrusive. They weren't like, get out of here. You know, I could barely see your wristband. They were very, very kind, very, very nice staff who cared about their job. Um, but nobody snuck in, you know what I mean, to an already open and fully available dance party that opened up at like 10 or something. Um, and All right. So this, remember, we were told that, hey, 80 people snuck in. Um, but there was also rumor that some people asked for their money back uh, from it. Uh, but the way he's making it seem is after all the food is gone, then everyone could come in on the dance floor. And then I think I heard you say something about because there was this one video you posted where it was like, boom, boom, boom. Three things I wanted to say for that, which was Christy did not make the dance dinner about her. Uh, she was emceeing along with another gentleman who was a big volunteer to the show, and they were both announcing people as they were coming in. At no point did she stop and go, all right, it's my turn. Let's talk about me. They, of course, like announced her because she's like everybody else, but I think she got the same amount of attention, if not less, than all the other major volunteers that did what they do for the show. Um, nor did um, I see, uh, what was the other thing about the dance that I thought was really weird? Um, the atrium was just a bad idea. You know what I mean? I've, I've been to Ranger stuff for the past couple of years and it's always in its own ballroom. Super nice setup. Very interactive with the guests. It's awesome. The atrium this year, I understand, was a big L. Like, nobody here is like, I'm not. I've received several people talk about how horrible it was to have it at this atrium, this open spot. But he's about to talk about like some of the benefits, though, of the VIP dinner. Uh, for those who went, maybe you guys can attest to the benefits standing on principle going like hey like we got to do this again and i'm sure there are conversations that are happening going guys the atrium didn't work you know what i mean we got a new hotel we got a brand new deal they probably threw in the atrium as like a cool like thing and if you're getting all this free swag even it's a shirt if you're never going to wear again you're still going to take it so i bet if they offered them the atrium at a good deal if they were going to be putting the show there as well as you know offering up hotel blocks i bet it was a cool idea because then they didn't have to sacrifice taking stuff down. Because I don't know if you're familiar, that for a normal ranger shop at Atlanta, the other hotel, they take down the panel room and turn that into the dinner. So that's a lot of work and effort that they have to put in that with this, it saved them a lot of time. You know what I mean? So they could put it into other things. And two, a lot of these people who are doing the takedown and setup of the dinner are also actively working the entire day at the show. So it definitely gives them a really good break. Because um, this year, I didn't have to take down my stuff to help set up the dinner. It was just done. Um, so, all right. So for, for references purposes, here is the 2023 VIP dinner. You're going to notice that it's pretty much closed off. that a fan <laughs> she too hot for the fan but uh but you see like i'm showing you this uh so you can see like the 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 partition i guess if you will uh these boards in the background they break down and it could be like half of a room or three rooms uh combined into one but this is how it usually is which is more intimate it's just the people who pay for it there um we're not outside guests are peeking down with their goddamn cameras filming and shit <laughs> Are you ready, Dave? I need you to be ready. 
See, I thought she should have always been the host, but you know, that's me uh, coming from my background hosting the events. But you know, he said, no, Christy was doing it. Uh, no real issues. All right, let's keep, let's keep it going. Oh yeah. I'm hoping next year, you know, like if we rearrange and we just don't do the atrium again, that'd be great. You know, it was cool seeing all the Rangers up there, but it's way, way more interactive when it came to all the other ones. And people were saying like tickets were upwards of a thousand dollars. You got those are whales, man. You got- yeah. They, they, I've seen some $2,000 tickets. I think the Titanium was a thousand three, like what? Four, five or five, four, three, two, or it was something like that. It was something like that. Uh, I'm sure Javi knows the price, but I did go to their website. The prices have been taken down. Uh, as always, whales who want to spend their money on stuff, they own their own businesses, they want to donate, they buy the pass. The thing is, you don't have to. I think the most expensive pass was like $200 anyway for the dinner. And I don't know what people don't understand about like, you can take advantage of that dinner so well. You can get free selfies with them, you can talk to the actors. It's so, like, I've gotten like five or six free selfies that if you go to the table, it's like 40 bucks. You know what I mean? You get a little booze from the actors, you know, you talk them up, everything's having, everyone's having a good time, and you take out your phone, ask for a selfie, you know, responsibly you know or um politely a lot of them are willing to go ahead and do that and again the games are way more interactive too so when you actually get to sit and talk with a ranger it feels like a one-on-one experience that they're trying to create rather than they're all up there eating now we get to watch them eat and then we're just chilling <laughs> you know what I mean? dust says uh i have no intention of going to ranger flop ever i mean hey look man that's a truthful statement um since i got banned uh, i don't i don't see that happening either Okay, I don't see it happen either. I mean, so the dinner wasn't exactly the best this year, but it's definitely not what everybody has been saying it was. Okay. okay um, what about Jesus? There was a there was a question I had for you. Oh, um, I'm sorry. No, it, it, it's been great, man. This is all great information. I appreciate. It. Why did you want to come in secret? Like, why are you scared to put your name, image, and likeness out there? So. I, I run a bunch of conventions. I go all over. Hold on. Before we get to that, Fairy Todd says uh, they don't care about <laughs> they don't care about out fans. They want your money. That's a truthful statement. Hey, you know I it. the money, y'all. There's poor people around. So I asked him, why does he not want to share his identity? Because I know people like he, he didn't show his identity and he's about to say exactly why he didn't share his identity. And I think he is 100 percent spot on with his reason for not wanting to share his identity over the place. You know, even my voice, I'm afraid people would recognize. So, like, if there's something to be done about that, that'd be good because I'm, I'm, I'm active in the community, you know. Yes, and I can I just touch your voice. Don't worry about it. I'll yeah, just touch you. Yes. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. You don't have to make me sound like Bugs Bunny or anything, but uh, I appreciate it. But the thing is, I guess if you're going to do that, then I can say this more freely. I have relationships with, with the Rangers and with other conventions, you know what I mean? The idea of the game is, you know, you talk to them. And so when people openly tell me that their story is, I'm biased, man. Like, I, I no matter what I tell you moving forward, is bias. So I'm like, okay, well, you're already an unfaithful narrator. Anything you say that comes out of your mouth next, I will challenge 100%. You know what I mean? Were you, was the line really busy or was it just two people in front of you? But because you're biased, you're going to tell me the line took 10 minutes, you know? Um, and the people at the show treat me very well. They don't pay me anything extra to treat me really well. They don't do anything that like puts me in a spotlight. So that way, you know, like I'm getting my center of attention for 15 minutes. I'm just treated like a normal human being and I enjoy everybody's company there. But I guess the thing is, I don't want to jeopardize those relationships, you know what I mean, with anybody because I was on this. Because like I said, not to say that you're bad, but there is a vibe that goes around, you know, like everyone's hackles start to stand up, you know what I mean? Because some of the stuff you said has been completely eye-opening, where I'm like, man, that really sucks. Damn, man. Like, this is someone who's never interacted with me, fairly new to the content. Like, hey, I just start watching you since I heard you on uh, Ranger Stop. Um, and for him to say that, I was just like, oh, wow, cool. Thank you, man. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm no stand. I'm not going to stand on some hill and die because some guy on the Internet is telling me a bad story about somebody <laughs> I care about. You know what I mean? But to play devil's advocate, when I hear and no offense to you, when I hear you say something from somebody that isn't true, like this whole situation with Brent, I'm like, OK, that's where everything else, I don't have any leg to stand on. But when I hear this, I'm like, well, I actually have information on it. And it doesn't even really paint anybody other than the person who told it 
in a bad light where for some reason he's holding information back that now this is now what his it's not even a trilogy it's a saga of him feeling harassed and violated by, by rangers where i'm like when's the next time like i'm afraid he's gonna find me he's gonna go hey i found the guy who talked about me and he violated me too you know i'm like no I, I just, I don't want that, you know, so I just want everybody to have a good time at these shows. And I think they are. And I think that there's like a select few people that have this, oh my gosh, I was on Henry's video and people are talking to me now, you know, people want to talk to me now and Henry, you're doing God's work. You know what I mean? You're, you're super spreading light, you know what I mean? <laughs> to, to injustices that people like, but at the same time too, I mean, not everything you know, that God does sometimes is real, is, is all, is, is black and white. You know what I mean? So sometimes I can look at it and go, well, I, there's room for questioning. There's some, there's supposed to be gray areas in life. And I feel like with this, there's a way, there's way more gray than black and white. There's a lot of speculation with a lot of stuff I've heard. I don't know, man. Y'all said he's shady. He's been, he's been in the con industry, I think almost a decade. Uh, so he, he knows everybody. And when we get to that, he's going to talk about like, Hey, yeah, I got, this is this. This is that. Um, but when you get to the Brent part, you're going to be like, oh, OK. OK, quick question. Uh, why? What about Austin St. John? Why wasn't he at the uh, VIP dinner? Oh, brother. So, again, in confidence, there is a lot of Rangers in between each other. Like, I don't know if you know if you know that the Cosmic Fury Green and Red, like, absolutely, like, hate each other. You know, like they you should watch like their their eyes, you know, watch their arms, look at their face whenever like one of them says something. The other one just hasn't. It, has, it doesn't have the time for them. Um, but a lot of it's written in their, their contract, you know, right off the bat. They just don't want to participate. You know, Austin has been at a dinner in the past. You know, if Hunter wasn't at the dinner this time and she is the last Red Ranger we will have until something happens. Obviously. Now, there was some major drama with this, this Hunter Dino, and he's about to get into it. I'm like, wait, no one told me about this uh, because typically my audience is mostly uh, MNPR. I don't got people who really care about a Hunter Dino per se. Hell, I didn't even know who she was, but he, he was given the juice. I was like, give it. Obviously. Um, and she was like the biggest diva this weekend from, from arguing with her, um, uh, excuse me, her handler, you know, her, the person who got her there to not even wanting to participate in the dinner, to actively arguing with people about wanting to be in photo shoots, you know, even when I was leaving, um, and I got my, 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 uh, my car from the valet. I saw her, um, and I forget their names, but it was gold cosmic and black cosmic, uh, fury in the lobby. And she is lighting up somebody on the phone about how they've been waiting there for like 10, 15 minutes. Where's their car? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is, this is nuts. You know what I mean? So everybody's got their own story to tell, but I mean, you know, what's crazy is that's the story everybody saw. Nobody talked about. Everybody doesn't see Austin St. John. And now we need to talk about that. There is no substance with where's Austin, but we see all this other drama and go, eh, that's all right. Like that's, there's not really a story to tell. It's girls hate girls, I guess. And you know, demons, yeah, when he said girls hate girls, I was like, oh, my God, is is that true? <laughs> is that true? And shout out to my man Strap. I see he said, what time we on Elden Ring? <laughs> uh, I don't know if this week is going to be a good week, Strap. Divas, but that's not a story. You know what I mean? That's that, I mean, or that's not a story they care about. They want to know where Austin was. You know, I even talked to the handler for her, uh, for him again. And she's super sweet. I've seen her plenty of times. I even worked with Austin a couple of years ago. Super down to earth guy. Uh, does Zachary McGinnis? Bam. You knew Zachary McGinnis is going to come up. Now, I don't care what people say or whatever, but this Zachary Taylor McGinnis is universally has been disliked by a lot of people. But for some strange reason, Austin won't cut this guy loose because uh, he was on my deathbed. He was right there by my side. He bailed me out of jail for crying out loud. You know, wh wh whatever. Uh, he knows where the skeletons are. He knows where the money is at from the PPP. Whatever you want to say, Austin St. John is like, nah, man. Zach, he said he with Zach. Uh, he said he's with Zach. For, 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 for life. For life. For life. A terrible human being. And guys, uh, you guys don't know, this is Austin St. John's booking agent. Uh, on the anniversary of Jason David Frank's death, he made this huge post where he said, hey, I'm glad you're dead. And from there on out, 
It's been a lot of people who just just are cool on him. But what's happening is people have forgotten about this post. Some people are aware. Some people are not. And people like Steve Cardenas, they don't even care. Never work with him again. I actually had Rangers with me at a show one time. And Zachary McGinnis was like the absolute worst person to ever work with. And this is far before JDF unfortunately passed away. And even then he was already just like a scumbag human being. But you don't see me going, hey, you know, let's defend Zach. No, he's dug his own grave, let him do his own thing. And it sucks because Austin's doing his own legal stuff. It sucks is that all these Rangers get in bed with these people before something really like crappy happens. And now they look shitty too. You know, like they're humans too. Like imagine like the chair you're sitting on. Imagine if they were known for doing something horrendous. But you sat in that chair every single stream, every single video, proud and happy to have it. You know, and now everyone looks like, dude, Henry likes that chair. What the? wrong with him you know <laughs> you know so I, like, i'm not saying like let's give everybody a pass because everybody doesn't know we're all grown adults at this point you know what i mean i, I think from 16 to 14 you kind of have a little wiggle room here but the moment you pass that 18 mark you're responsible for your own actions and whether or not you know austin St. john does any of his stuff or takes care of his own house you know it's up to him you know but i'm saying like we can't exactly hold them to the sins of the father you know what i mean what Zachary did is not, you know, okay, it's not everybody so, else's responsibility. Yeah, but what about Austin St. John and the uh, wire fraud? He played guilty to it. And- no, this is me like, yo, this ninja played guilty. He's just sweeping. He's just sweeping. He he bought the sweep. And no one is talking oh, about guilty, that. He's not guilty. And that's it. Well, because there's not a story, Henry. Bro. There's not a story. He's, it's over. You know what I mean? It's not over. I think that's a major story. It's highly undercover. I wish people would cover it more, but uh, because he's not popular, no one really cares, though, right? Like, it was a million people who got caught up in PPP fraud. Uh, he just happened to be one of them. Once you've pled guilty, what are you gonna what are you gonna crack? You well, know what I mean? That he do he, he, he'll likely be in jail within the next year by January. Is my prediction. For sure. So then, come next January, you'll have another story, you know, to talk about. Hey, he's actually going into the courthouse today. But the thing is, until we find out what he did or if he <laughs> admits to it, now we have all this room to speculate. Now, look, we all know what ASJ did, but remember, I got my daughter and my grandfather in the next room. I just got to let him cook. Just got to let him cook. To talk, you know what I mean? But when it's done and done fact, like Austin St. John pleading guilty, which I've seen, which I go, damn, that really sucks. I have his autograph on two items in my room. I liked watching him. He was super cool when I worked with him and um, David Fielding. That sucks. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, we move on. And we go, you know what, that, that, that isn't, I'm not his brother, I'm not his mom, you know what I mean, he made his own decisions and made his own bed, and we can just move on with our lives, you know, because there are plenty of other rangers out in the industry, like, you know, uh, Ward, Red Turbo Ranger, one of the more unsung Red Rangers, like, that I love seeing at all, at all these shows, uh, Stu, Stellan, Stuin, forgive me, but he's such a cool dude, and nobody talks about all the cool stuff he's doing, like, all the nice, fun stuff he does for all of his fans. Hey, sorry, sorry, so in the war. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. So I don't know. It's uh, it's unfortunate that Austin did what he did, but we got to move on. Uh, this guy is I already verified his identity. He's 100 percent not one of the owners. <laughs> you know, I'm like, there's not a story there. So I hope that you can find more stories about things like personally, my, my biggest gripe is I and this is for me to you. I don't know why you haven't talked more about Sky Frank and Jenna Frank and Tammy Frank, you know? Like, I understand the idea of respecting the dead. Absolutely. You're not going to get me to defile JDF's memory by, you know, trying to drag family members into it. But I am very curious. Sometimes I see them do very, very interesting and suspicious things to me where I'm like, we're selling a ring. We're selling a commemorative ring that he apparently worked with this jeweler for. And you can find that same ring on Timu for $13. And you're trying to charge me 200 You know, I think it's really bad taste that after he passed away they tried to sell jesus didn't tap shirts like when he himself did which is like horribly ironic you know what i mean but who thought that through you know like the main pinned post on her face on jdf's official instagram now is all these quote-unquote projects that they were supposed to be working on which is nfts sports drinks uh, gamer skins, but the only two very specific things, which were the commemorative ring and the actual White Dragon movie, the only thing that we actually know anything about, everything else is just, what are you talking about NFTs? What are you talking about sports drinks? You know, and then you have all these people in the comments going, these were things he was working on far before he passed. I'm like, 
really? All of these things at once? And none of the money's going to, like, suicide prevention or awareness? Like, I understand, like, money should be going to the family, but then that's where I start to sound like an ass. You know what I mean? Now, here is the ring. Um, let me, let me put the ring up for you guys. Now, I, th- I think, didn't the ring sell out? <laughs> I, I think the ring did sell out or something. Um, it's a ring with a, I think it plays a, a message or something. I'm not too sure about it. I really didn't look into it. Um, I didn't plan on buying one or anything like that, but this is the ring. Um, I guess it has a message. Hey, uh, I just want to tell you that is JDF. I want you to always remember, stay motivated. Never say the words, I can't. Always say, I can. Always say, I will. Never say, I won't. And I just want you to wear this to protect you, to give you the motivation to succeed in life and to become who you want to become. And always remember, no matter who says anything, you are you and you should be your biggest fan and be proud wear this always to protect you and wear it and have that confidence and always know jdf believes in you and you believe in yourself much love much respect it's morphin time all right and francis uh for you guys don't know uh jason david frank's assistant prior to him passing uh she said the rings were definitely planned before he passed so there's that. And Matt Fisher uh, said, um, I'm jealous you interviewed V for Vendetta. I did not interview V for Vendetta, but um, I did interview someone who was very knowledgeable. And in it now, as far as if you can get this ring on Timu for $20, um, I, I really didn't have time to fact check it, but it looks just like to be a ring. I don't know if it's silver, gold, titanium, platinum uh, or what, but or the cost of it. Um, so. There is that for me, but I guess it has a message in it. Um, does anyone has anyone purchased the ring? Does anyone have one? Uh, let me know in the chat if you do. Um, so let's get back to the interview because we're like close to the Brent part. All right. I mean, so that's where people like you come in because you've got that integrity to dig, <laughs> you know what I mean? And not care. You can take it on the chest and, you know, and go for it. But I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't know why we're not looking at that. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, Jenna Frank's holding herself around as JDF's, you know, daughter, which she is, but she is nothing to Power Rangers other than a credit in this White Dragon movie that isn't even out yet. Yet she's going to cons and taking the $40, taking the autographs. At least Sky Frank is a musician to a degree. You know what I mean? And all I hear nothing but stuff. <laughs> Look, when he starts saying this shit, I was like, all right, all right. I was like, uh. <laughs> yeah, that brother's starving. Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> uh, but hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. Like, biased against JDF, but support Sky Frank. Uh, we dis we we respectfully disagreed on Sky Frank, but there's only so much I can say, guys. He's going to cons and taking the forty dollars, taking the autographs. At least Sky Frank is a musician to a degree. You know what I mean? And all I hear nothing but stories <laughs> about like I think my face uh says it all. Her giving away f- Mike, your your part hasn't got came up yet. Free autographs. You know what I mean? Sky Frank's there for the vibes. You know what I mean? And she gets way more of a bad rap. You know what I mean? Whereas I see these other two people genuinely not doing anything other than cosplaying as her dad two times. And now all I can see on my feet is she's going to be the next Green Ranger. And I'm like, there isn't another woman of substance out there who's like earned her keep that isn't just by blood taking this up. But I could ramble about that forever. That's something new. The moment it happened, we took it to heart. Like, dude, I cried for like two days. You know what I mean? I'm a grown adult. You know, I watched my hero pass away, and then I'm thinking everyone's going to start talking about this. You know, talking about not even why he did it, not even about the divorce with Tammy. That's their private business. But now when we move forward and we start putting his likeness out there to make money, now I'm like, whoa. The same way that you're talking about the order, they're taking money from people and delivering zero to no product. And I, you know, I'd say there's no movie. There's no movie. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, the you know, he was going in. I mean, it's zero product. <laughs> but Legend of White Dragon, I, I do think it's going to come out, man. I, I think it's coming out. You know, I don't think it's going to be like some order part two. 
Yeah. What would you like? Would you like it if they came out with a movie on um? What's that? There's some like streaming service where you're like, it's like these are two dollar movies. Like what are we doing here? Like, two, you know what I mean? Like at least that would have been something. But that's what I'm seeing with the production of some of the stuff that Tammy and Jenna Frank are putting out. Where it's like they're not even giving me Timu stuff. They're giving me Tubi stuff. You know what I mean? And they're charging me full Netflix original premium prices. I mean, I mean, he's just giving his opinion, guys. I mean, you don't have to agree with his opinion. Uh, but, you know, he's of the belief it's of low quality. I've never seen that. Not it. Don't get too wrapped up in people's opinions. You know what I mean? And that's the conversation. Like, I also want people to have, you know, like the order. I get it. They should have their money back. People should be getting their stuff back. That's the end of that. You know what I mean? What happens further there is their own, um, their own morals decide what they do next, you know? There's other stuff actively happening right now, Henry. Like, no offense, you know, because I know you like to talk about the order. But there's- well, no, I don't like to talk about the order. It's just on my docket. And like when when I have something on my docket, it's like I got to finish this shit. I got to get it off my desk. Like if that that's actually something I say at work. Like I got to get this off my desk. Stuff happening right now where fans are still actively giving away their money. Like Blake Foster, like put all these people on hold for the longest time for his like um, turbo morpher. The- thing looks terrible like it's like how much money was this too like it's like i could have a friend 3d print this for a hundred dollars you know what i mean and paint it you know myself and it would look so much better and felt better i kind of like smacked it on the ground as hard as i could this guy is charging stupid prices for stuff that he's made people wait years for months for and now it's just now saying like hey yeah get on the wait list get on the wait list like there's so much more stuff you could be looking at brother that's all i'm saying all right. So speaking of Blake Foster, <laughs> uh, I did do a little soft dig. <laughs> you dig, bro. You'd like to dig. Now, someone did post a a message in Henry Court about how his morphers may or may not be working, uh, different things like that. But I did. I did find some stuff out or oh, whatever. Right. What is this? Um. <laughs> so. This is the announcement, I believe. Excite or where is the pre-order? Uh, but anyway, here here it goes right here for the Turbo Morpher. Uh, the plastic version was one night one twenty nine. The full version was um, two hundred dollars. Now I do know someone did have an experience where they purchased this Master Morpher and shit got a little hairy. And they had to they had to press Blake Foster for a refund uh, because it was like, hey, uh, where's my master morpher? And it was, he was like, uh, what? It's coming, man. Just be patient. He was like, uh, nope, nope. Uh, run me my money because you haven't delivered. OK, um, so here I believe. Oh, yeah. All right. Let me right, right, make sure. OK, so here is some promo. I got to uh cluck get get the music off or whatever i'm trying to trying to preserve this stream if you will but did anyone pre-order the blake foster master morpher um and it finally got delivered june 22nd so six months later after he announced it i'm sure he collected lots of money for pre-orders and he says hey trust the process it's here Lights and sound too. We know you all have been super excited about these. We we too. I can't believe it's officially happening. We have these at my booth for you to see in person. These things are sick. For those who pre-ordered, we will be shipping those in a few weeks. What the fuck? What? Hey yo, what the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. I've already waited goddamn seven months for it, man. What the hell? What the hell? So you got you've been waiting seven months for it, and he's like, "Hey, come check it out." Mike. He come check it out at my booth, and I'm gonna ship it out in a few weeks. Now a few is more than a couple, so we looking at three, right? We looking at at least three. Um, but hey, man, hey, y'all collectors, y'all do what y'all y'all want. Uh, but I do know one person who did press them for a refund, and they got their money back, but not without pressing them. It's a shame that you can advertise a product in what looks to be December. December <laughs> pre-sale is now open. Oh my God. 
can you imagine the interest on holding someone's money for seven months? Um, and taking money through Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, only to be told in June, keep waiting a little bit longer. <laughs> like, God, hey! oh, I'll be, I'll be pissed off. But this is why you should uh, wait for a product in hand. What does my man does say? Okay, question. Did he show any evidence that Brent was lying? Because this seems like the same thing with Brent and David, meaning there is no proof. This is all hearsay. That's a truthful statement. This is 100% hearsay. Right? Because Brent's story is hearsay, but it's corroborated. It's corroborated by Stephanie and uh, Greek. Um, Greek culture, but we haven't got to this Brent story yet. Just, 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 just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on. Hold on. We gonna get there. Uh, but what do you guys think about Blake Foster's, um, <laughs> Hey, the hustle is the hustle, man. The hustle is the hustle. What do you guys think about Blake Foster's, uh, $200 toy that you need to wait a couple weeks for? <laughs> oh man. I'm just saying, just saying some people, some people are excited for them. Uh, some people are like, Hey, I wish I was there to pre-order. Uh, I mean, like maybe this is curated, but I did see a post of people saying stuff wasn't working out. Like it seems maybe it's not Blake Foster's, but let, let's keep going with the video. I see people getting anxious, but he's trying to get me to go down these other stories. Now he's about to talk about Karen Ashley. Then we get to Brent. Hey man, uh, you giving me some ideas. The thing with, uh, I really haven't looking too much into the whole Tammy and Jenna thing. You hear my daughter in the background, <laughs> her and grandpa having a good old time. Being, uh, to be honest, um, as far as sky, I mean, I, if you know the history sky, she absolutely hates my guts, uh, from earlier Henry, in the day, fuck you and your uh, fake when I called her out. You a fake ass bitch. Lion. And I think people are overlooking her history with the fandom where she used to be actually accused of scamming fans and they would show proof and her dad will bail her out. So people just told her blind. blind either that. So yeah, she's there for the vibes, giving away free autographs. Who the hell cares if she's giving away a free autograph when it's worth absolutely dog shit? Oh, I get that. No, I get it. I'm not saying that she's innocent by any means. I guess I'm, what I'm saying is at least like, uh, at least what I'm saying is she's, I guess she's trying to be better by being there. You know what I mean? If she keeps it up, then we take her off and that should be the end of it. You know what I mean? I always believe in second chances. Um, to a degree, depending on like the first act of heinousness. But I tend to also, for my own personal, I tend to stay as far away from her as possible. Like it sucks that after he passed away, people came out, sold his autograph and his likeness. I, I have a helmet here that's apparently worth fifteen hundred dollars. You know what I mean? But I won't trade that autograph and that memory for literally anything. You know? But these people will go and tell. And the, the shitty part is when they get announced for shows, they're hugging their dad in some of the pictures. I'm like. What the hell is this? Like you're, you're trying to get me to go. You know what I mean? You're trying to get me to go see you because you knew him. Guess what? I have a picture of me hugging him too. And you don't see me posting that everywhere whenever I'm announced. You know what I mean? That's the thing. Sky hasn't seen her father in years. Years yeah. before his passing. And that picture she's doing is likely the last one that she has of him. And they were, um, they were estranged. So you have all this. And then once he passes, she becomes opportunistic, sees the hustle and like, oh, I'm going to start doing cons now because she was invited to do it by Karen Ashley, who absolutely her and Jason David Frank's relationship was pretty much non-existent. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I guess yeah. And the whole sky was disowned. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean. Let her tell it. <laughs> Let her tell Let's it. Let's also talk about Karen briefly. Like, I enjoy her. She's very nice to work with. I am not on, like, the financial side of it. And you know what sucks is money turns everybody into a different person. You know what I mean? And especially with the order. Dude, how many hands you got in the cookie jar there? How many different, you know, like, people that want their cut? You know what I mean? How many people that want their time's worth? You know, I already like looking at that, man. There was already way too many hands on, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen for that. But well, if you don't know, we've learned quite a lot. We learned that Johnny Young Bosch was doing everything and he walked away. Uh, it was illegal for them to accept money for people to be in the, the movie and guarantee sad cars, what they had to eventually refund. Uh, you cannot even overlook the scheduling complications with all those Rangers. Sure, we all go meet up in February and film this stuff. But Johnny Young Bosch may have been the brains behind it. And when he walked away, 
um, combined with the fact that they had to give some money back, I think the project just fell apart. And it's more other rumors surrounding the order. I just haven't had uh, time to confirm them. I guess uh, one quote that I heard you say, which I guess like this is the most I'll, I'll challenge you on anything you said. I didn't see Karen make the Ranger Stop show about her, man. Like her line was busy, but like she brought Austin St. John on and he's huge. You know what I mean? The one year I was there and JDF was there. You know what I mean? She didn't put herself right next to him. She was like on the other side of the room. So like to give him space for his fans, you know what I mean? There wasn't this like, Hey, let me jump in every time there was a photo or I'll do a $10 combo for every autograph you get or something like that. I'll jump in and just get a small slice. So I guess I don't see her taking center stage at the show other than briefly at the dinner, which man, like imagine talking with fans all day at your booth and then still getting your happy ass up there and putting on a show for people who paid money to be there. It's exhausting. You know what I mean? Especially if she does it twice, you know, cause there's an Orlando show too sometimes. So, it's like and she's like you said she got the hustle of the cons she's doing shows every single year or every single month basically you know what i mean she's on this crazy circuit of constantly talking with people and i guess like i just haven't seen it other than like the selfies that they've posted to thank the owners of the show you know what i mean that's no different than what i've seen at other shows there's no that's something different than her being in the power ranger panel for mighty morphin you know what i mean the ladies of um the ladies of power rangers photo op was super fun you know what i mean Again, she didn't like put herself in some pedestal. So I guess I'm again, I'm not trying to just say like, I love her to death. Everything she does is perfect. But I guess what I've seen at Ranger Stop is specifically from this year, which this year is the biggest talk that I've ever heard about any Ranger Stop. I just didn't see it, man. You know, and I'm, and I'm trying to be as sincere and possible, like as possible about that. I'm not trying to cover it up. I didn't see her. A kick. <laughs> I didn't see her confront Brett at an ATM machine. That's for sure. So, and I and I didn't hear stories about it. That's the thing. It's so funny, man. People talk. You had this girl, Stephanie, I think, on who was like, "Now, Stephanie, you come up." And this, and Matthew was right. You know, uh, this guy could be biased because uh, he works with Karen Ashley, uh, but he also wanted to remain anonymous because uh, who knows, man. Who knows? They're doing weird things now with people on this channel. All right. Weird things. Like It was a loud altercation between so-and-so with Austin St. John. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know how many people were there? The girl from Cobra Kai was in that same exact corner. Um, basically, you just missed us talking about uh, Ranger Stop. We covered the autistic guy. We covered the VIP dinner. Now we're on Karen Ashley and then we're on Brent. Thunder, right across the way with the Dino Thunder guys. You know what I mean? Right next to her, I, f I forget who was right on the right of Austin. But then going down the line with the Cosmic Fury Rangers, there were so many people there. But Henry, only two people are talking to you about it. It's so weird that it was such a loud altercation or such a crazy and right in your face incident. You know, only two people are talking to you about it. Well, you have you to know? think about this, right? You wanted to reach out to me in uh, with with confidence to be anonymous. There are people who are so scared to reach out to me to uh, give me that information. So when people like Brent come on and you say maybe he's lying or embellishing, that lie or embellishment will continue to go because there's no one willing to step up to challenge him because they're scared of, like you say, potentially losing relationships. Other people have reached out to me. And said they're scared of being blocked from the cons because that's where they do business at. So this is why. These stories just keep growing because no one is willing to address them. And God forbid Karen is like puts a puts the kibosh on it because she can't. She won't because she's still stinking of the order, even though, hey, she did this event. She wasn't the head of it. Uh, she didn't put herself in the spotlight. But people are starting to ask questions about the order. And because of my findings, there are really high up people in the industry who reached out to me in confidence, in private and said, hey, I had no idea that people got refunds. Oh, absolutely. No, I guess what I'm saying more or less other than like, I guess the fear is there, you know, obviously they come forward. What I'm saying is staff members for the people saying he can't be public. I like I know his Instagram. I, I looked at this guy. It's not it's not like he contacted me like this and I just was like, OK, good story. Uh, I'm a run with it. No, no, no. It, it's way deeper than that. Talk volunteers talk like there's so much other gossip just even between staff members to staff members that isn't worth your time that they talk about but it'd be so weird that this this gem you know what i mean of like dude you're never gonna believe what happened at this actor's table today you know what i mean no way that no that that person wouldn't confide in any other 
staff member and that shit spreads like wildfire you know what i mean there's stuff i know that i shouldn't know because someone told me in confidence and of course you know no name drops or any other stories like that but it's like you ha- you had no affiliation with that story how the hell did you know well so and so told me so and so told me and everybody's in that break room talking you know what i mean all the time so I, that's what i guess what i'm saying more than anything is there's so many people there but only one person heard it and that one person took that same story to the grave almost up, up until talking to you um but i don't know a lot of these a lot of these guys you're talking to i'm just curious you know what i mean i'm just curious about how they hold themselves and what kind of light they see themselves in because they seem almost happy to tell you this stuff henry you know they seem almost excited you know, and I'm, dude, I hate, no, no offense, I hate talking to you about this stuff because I wish that they, because if they told the truth, I wouldn't be here. You know? Right, well, don't worry, this entire interview is going to come out. I'm going to distort your voice. Um, Thank you. Don't worry about it. Your Discord is not going to be shown. I'll probably put like a slideshow and um, I don't know when I'm going to get it edited because I got my daughter, but um, yeah, no I worry. appreciate you coming forward and um, I protect all my sources. I already actually already know what your Instagram is, but I just wanted to see if you would mention it. Um, but, uh, people, people troll me all the time. So I appreciate this. I'm going to edit it. It's yeah. about 42 minutes. I'll put it in, begin it to end. I won't edit out. All right, let's get to Brent, guys. Let's get to Brent's story. I think Brent's story is what everyone is here for. Uh, like Dust said earlier, this is all hearsay because no one has a goddamn recording of anything uh, that took place. The only thing we can really confirm is if people were in the building or not. However, in my opinion, I am of the opinion if more people come up confirming one story over another, I'm more inclined to confirm the story that more people said. But this story of what happened to Brent is 100 percent plausible, thousand percent plausible and you will only know this if you've been to a con with brent before so without further ado like the stream let's get to the brent story we'll play it beginning to end it's about 12 minutes so let's go no worries um yeah so i had seen a couple of the videos that you posted and have just seen a couple inconsistency inconsistencies that i've seen with just the, the stories I've heard from the dinner, the stories I've heard with Christy, I believe her name is, the girl who was accused of um, commenting on somebody's autism, and the biggest thing being the incident with Brett in the hallway. Um, so I was vending out there all weekend, and so the way he explained what happened was kind of nuts, because me and my brother who were there watching it all go down um, were immediately we saw him like we were like oh my gosh that's the guy because a very resilient the name was traveling all over the show from <laughs> even even thursday you know <laughs> um remember friday me and my daughter had a play date or something <laughs> or saturday we did we had the play date I, I cut the video i cut this video on friday i found out i was banned thursday wait wait wait, wait. i i, I know we want to get to brent what do you mean henry resilient the name was traveling throughout the show friday? even on thursday I think I found out I was banned Friday. I stayed up late, cut the video, dropped it Saturday morning. And then I went to our play date. And then that's when like my phone was just blowing up nonstop. Um, I've, I've gone to the show many years. And no offense to you. I've just never heard the name. And it was like Thursday set up first thing in the morning. And there was already this like vibe in the air. And the moment I talked to anyone that I know, they're like fans or um, vendors. That was the name people were, I guess, kind of on edge about. Why would people be on edge about my name? If you're a vendor, why would you be on edge about my name, especially if you don't even know me? No, I can't speak to like movies or comments at different conventions or anything like that. So do me a favor. Turn your mic down 10 decibels. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. How about now? Better. All right, perfect. All right, so you, you, you hear my name go around. Yeah, so there's just this vibe in the air already, and then I did my own digging, watched a bunch of videos that Thursday night into Saturday, and was like, wow, this is a lot of stuff that even I, who has been in the convention scene for the past 10 years, been going to Ranger Stop for the past four, never heard of, because I guess I just wasn't in those channels. So, like, the, the Order movie, um, I did follow, you know, the Legend of the White Dragon stuff, some of the, you know, Johnny Young box drama a little bit. Um, so, from there, 
I was like very curious to see what the big hype was for this weekend specifically. And that's when Brent's story was like at the front of my radar where I was watching it and trying to understand like what happened to him. And I felt. All right. There go our guy, Brent. Should we play his his intro? Uh, if you guys don't know, Brent is been on the channel for a while and he has his own. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the guy testifying about Brent's story. Genuinely upset that somebody could treat him this way. And then my brother was the one who actually, because we're sitting there at the table, brings it to our attention that he's even in the hallway. And he's like, oh my gosh, that's the guy from the video. And we were the only people to notice, you know what I mean? And he was like eating it up, which was super weird. You know, you'd think that like he would kind of be a little bit more humble in the idea of, um... Guys, like, it's drama. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it happened to me or walk away. I can't, I can't say, but he definitely seemed to enjoy the attention of people coming up to him and talking to him and going, you're the guy from the video. When at the end of the day, he's not even Henry. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, and so that is crazy. And yes, I do think Brent relishes in the fact that people, uh, quote unquote, as some would say, acknowledge me. Because uh, he's on the number one goddamn Power Ranger uh, channel in the world uh, so often that's viewed by thousands of thousands of people. They're bound to see him at one point or another. So I'm just like, man, he's eating it up as if he is. And so that was just like the quick. And, you know, to be fair, I, you know, this may be the most this is cons is Brent's element. OK, this is where he thrives. This is where he's popular. The, the actors know him, you know, as Daddy Warbucks and fans know him as like, oh, he's the guy who'd be on Henry Resilience channel. All right. Because most of y'all be too scared to goddamn cam up and speak up. First look at what had happened. And I wish I had the video in front of me because I, I went through it bit by bit and I wasn't going to I wasn't sure we were going to be able to go through all of it today. Um, but. The first encounter was weird based on what he had said, and I could be wrong because, again, I wasn't fully prepped, so we can always talk about this again, but um, he says that he kind of came in and everything was fine and was immediately confronted by Christy. I feel like that's what he said. Um, and then it wasn't until that conversation that Christy brings up what he did at Cardenas' table and all this other stuff. Now, the way um, Ranger Stop was this year, it was like a box N, you know what I mean? Well, to give this guy the benefit of the doubt, I can't imagine, despite Stephanie being there on Thursday, she spoke to every vendor and every volunteer, everybody. I don't know about that, but maybe like she probably didn't hear any talk shattering me on Thursday. Um, I, I would. Two things could be true, whereas Stephanie didn't hear anything. And this guy's like, no, everyone was talking about you. Um, let's keep it going. Because you got to remember, uh, Stephanie's level of access in this season, vendor's level of access, who has a personal relationship with Karen Ashley, that access may be a little different. Maybe a little different. But I'm going to drop the link so y'all can come up, but I don't got too much time. Imagine you're drawing it in, but with just straight lines. You know what I mean? That's all it was. You go down one hallway, you turn another, you turn another. It's a whole box. Um, and you can cut in and out of the convention center through these side doors. And that's exactly where I saw him coming out the first time normally with no one following him, no one confronting him whatsoever. I actually saw Kirsty or Christy again. I'm, I'm sorry if I got the name wrong, walking from the kid zone, which is on the other end of the hall. So she wasn't even with him to begin with. She wasn't even like escorting him. Um, so it was already, I was like, that's weird. The way he's describing the encounter happening didn't happen like that. Um, that's my daughter as I open up her a snack. <laughs> and then they were just engaged in a normal, cordial conversation mm -hmm. talking about Ranger Stop. So the weird part was, is the, the thing that he kept bringing up was Whoa. normal, cordial conversation. 
not necessarily a confrontation, according to this guy. This guy. Um, so it was already, I was like, that's weird. The way he's describing the encounter happening didn't happen like that. Um, and then they were just engaged in a normal, cordial conversation, mm-hmm. talking about ranger stop so the weird part was is the the thing that he kept bringing up was are you a fan are you a fan are you a fan all she was doing was talking to him about the show how long have you been going to the show do you enjoy it um oh are you a fan of power rangers the way he made it seem was like he was accusing her and then he almost like talked himself into a corner which was like super weird she didn't bring up henry resilient in the slightest he did he brought it up first where she's talking about how like, yeah, like we've had some people talk about, you know, like some stuff that's in the air and he's like, Oh no. He's like, yeah, I'm a big advocate for power Rangers. I love, you know, going on forums, going on sites and talking the Rangers up. And the part that got me the most was where he was like, yeah. I- Here's the thing. I know for a fact, I've seen screenshots of Brent's Reddit and him going on Reddit sites to talk about power Rangers. So when you got this guy saying this story who has never met Brent, but has this very specific thing about Brent that maybe you guys don't know. I know some people know because they sent me screenshots of what Brent says on Reddit. So when he says he told Christy that he goes on forums defending Power Rangers, I'm like, okay. That that lends some credibility to this guy because he's confirming something that he wouldn't just know that Brent's on forums. Right. That's not something you say, oh, hi, my name is Brent. I go on Reddit and I defend Austin St. John and Karen Ashley and Walter Jones. Where she's talking about how like, yeah, like we've had some people talk about, you know, like some stuff that's in the air. And he's like, oh, no, he's like, yeah, I'm a big advocate for Power Rangers. I love, you know, going on forums, going on sites and talking the Rangers up. And the part that got me the most was where he was like, yeah, I even go on channels like Henry Resilient and like defend the Rangers. I go on there and go, hey, like we shouldn't be talking bad about them. Like this is our community. And the moment I heard that is where my ears like perked up. I was like, wait a second. Like now he's like in front of her because he's talked himself into a corner. She didn't even bring it up. It wasn't until he did that now all of a sudden she's like, that's who you are. You're the guy that's from the videos. So not that he was like asking for it, but nobody was looking for him. You know what I mean? And even if they were, there wasn't like this manhunt down for this one guy. You know what I mean? It was just happenstance that she bumped into him. He brought up Henry Resilient and then tried to backpedal what he does on your channel, which again, I don't think your channel. Brent is name dropping me 100% at cons. I spoke to him privately about it and it, I, I have no idea why he drops it. But maybe because my name holds, I guess, some weight at cons. But yes, people have told me that Brent name drops Henry Resilient at Comic Cons. It was bad. I don't think the stories are bad. I just think that he was immediately like, oh, shit, like I'm on this channel actively shooting down shitty things Rangers do. But now I'm in front of somebody confronting me, not even confronting me, just talking to me about how I'm a fan with Rangers. And now I look like an idiot, you know, and so me and my looked at each other right away and were like wasn't he just blasting austin st john wasn't he just blasting like um just overall practices that some of these rangers have been doing and now he's in front of her lying through his teeth and now he is not confident anymore that eating it up is gone you can see like the the lights in his face and the whole time they're again they're just having a cordial conversation and then that's when she goes what was that name you said Damn, Brent, <laughs> when name dropping me goes wrong. Hold on. I mean, I, th- I feel like this is like the key part. And I, I kind of want to hammer it home that he said, hey, Brent brought up your name. She had no idea who you was. She probably knew my name, but she like me and Brent look dramatically different. So if she has a picture of me in her mind and she sees Brent and he says the trigger word, which is Henry Resilient. She's putting two and two together in front of somebody confronting me, not even confronting me, just talking to me about how I'm a fan with Rangers. So not that he was like asking for it, but nobody was looking for him. You know what I mean? Uh, Angel Pest says Brent is the equivalent to Rando from recess snitching to Henry like Miss Finster. 
Uh, well, you know, uh, the we'll we'll see what Brent has to say about this. Uh, I'm sure he's listening. But if he come look, if he clicks the link and he say, "Oh, I didn't hear it," I'm just gonna click him off and say, "All right, well, just talk to us when you hear it." And even if they were, there wasn't like this manhunt down for this one guy. You know what I mean? It was just happenstance that she bumped into him. He brought up Henry Resilient and then tried to backpedal what he does on your channel, which again, I don't think your channel's bad. I don't think the stories are bad. I just think like he was immediately like, oh shit, like I'm on this channel actively shooting down shitty things Rangers do, but now I'm in front of somebody confronting me, not even confronting me, just talking to me about how I'm a fan with Rangers, and now I look like an idiot, you know? And so me and my brother looked at each other right away and were like, wasn't he just blasting Austin St. John? Wasn't he just blasting, like, um, just overall practices that some of these Rangers have been doing? And now he's in front of her lying through his teeth. And now he is not confident anymore. That eating it up is gone. You can see, like, the, the lights in his face. And the whole time... They're again, they're just having a cordial conversation. And then that's when she goes, what was that name you said? And he goes, Henry Resilient. She goes, Henry Resilient. And I can, I can see her. Con- it's like Beetlejuice and shit. Henry Resilient. Henry Resilient. Hey, you've been talking <laughs> shit about me. You know what I'm saying? My hair is awful. He ain't nobody. Connecting the dots. So for him to make it seem like this was like some pre-planned, premeditated confrontation, you know, in the hallway is absolutely false. Because we see, like, I've, I'm, out, I'm out there, you know? I'm out there watching people go back and forth. I'm seeing all my buddies from, you know, you know, um, Go Go Ranger Station, you know, like the girl who does a show out in Philadelphia. You know, I'm seeing all these cosplayers go back and forth. I'm seeing more from Time Fitness. I'm seeing all these people all the time. You know what I mean? So I'm like a painting on the wall that actively people interact with. But this, for some reason, they were like in their own world the entire time she didn't notice us he didn't notice us we were big so he's he's like not shy about like hey what's going on he's like up in my ear like do you see what's going on over there but like now i can see like this isn't a planned thing this was just he talked himself into this corner and i can't you know attest to whether or not he did what he did with galactic productions and talking to steve about it but i'm like at the end of the day if you're making someone uncomfortable like that something's gonna happen regardless you know what i mean now, if he's lying, he's lying. You know what I mean? If Steve is actually with him or not, that's still bogus. You know what I mean? You shouldn't be lying about that stuff to your fans. But at the end of the day, like, Henry, I could just, you know, start calling you out right here and make you uncomfortable and we could just end this stream or, you know, this conversation right now. But that's your right. You know what I mean? Sure. And- <laughs> TJ, you're so stupid. <laughs> God. But I wouldn't do that because I want to have an actual intellectual conversation about this with you. And I'm sure that means well, but there are ways to go about it. Because if he's the common denominator in all these stories. Who said they didn't do this to Javi? <laughs> Why? Um, uh, Francis says, I believe this guy a hundred. I would understand if they did this to Henry or Javi or I. Who said they didn't? We never really talked to Javi, did we? Right now. But that's your right. You know what I mean? Sure. And, but I wouldn't do that because I want to have an actual intellectual conversation. Okay. Someone. All right. Someone's said objection. Everyone likes attention. That doesn't equal guilt. Uh, I think, sure. Some people do like attention. However, there is there. Are, there are those that seek out attention. When I'm with my daughter, I'm trying to like draw as less attention to me as humanly possible. Uh, people. Walk up to me like, oh, I told you a story about the old friend from like high school. He's like, I know your friends. I was like, no, I don't remember you, man. I want less attention to me as possible when I'm with my daughter. In fact, when I'm not online, I'm just like, I'm really just chilling. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really chilling. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the boys probably at midnight if it drops. Uh, but I'm not like someone who's like, hey, look at me now. Sure, I'm streaming. Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me and shit. Focus, look into my eyes, tell me what you see. Uh, but there are people who goes out of their way to maybe insert themselves in conversations. Even, even we got the autistic guy or the fake autistic guy, allegedly, uh, who said, hey, yes, I lied to get attention, to feel important, to do this, to do that. But hey, it is what it is. And Mike Bradley, I don't know if he want to shed some light on this. You know, you got to tread real lightly, Mike. Uh, If you want to call in in about 10 minutes to 
faceless, faceless. I don't want your face up here, man. I don't, I don't want no blowback for you. Uh, if you want to call in, because I know you are a witness to all this. And, you know, uh, I really appreciate Mike, man. <laughs> I, I really do. Uh, I think me and him see eye to eye on a lot of things. Uh, but, you know, due to the size of the track that we're on, uh, you know, it's like bloods and crips and shit. But we we cool, though. We cool. We let we, we you know, he would never draw me unless he had to. And I, I definitely wouldn't draw Mike. But goddamn, uh, maybe Mike could call in and uh, maybe shed some light on the situation about this with you. And I'm sure that means well, but there are ways to go about it, because if he's the common denominator in all these stories where it's I was violated, I was harassed, I was bullied. I'm like. I knew a kid on the playground who always played the victim card, you know what I mean? But he comes in with the ball, nobody wants to play with him, okay, I'm taking the ball home. You know, and everyone's looking at him like, man, he's super fun to hang out with, you know what I mean? So anyway, going back to the actual situation, it was until then the actual security guard comes up, the guy that he was talking about originally, he briefly mentioned him, but didn't mention any of the actual conversation that then happened afterwards. He thought it was more, are you a fan, are you a fan? That's not at all what happened. The... The chief of security, bigger guy, very friendly, was in front of him going, hey, we're, you know, in the middle of an investigation, you know, we've, we've heard some speculation about you filming and recording, and Brett's just like, no, I haven't, I haven't done any, or Brent, sorry, hasn't done any of that. And no one's in his face, no one's saying take out your phone, no one's saying show us what you did, and the fact that they didn't kick him out right then and there shows that, like, this convention actually did about, like, shooting before asking questions they were talking to him he was fully free i think he meant asking questions before shooting to leave at any point they were not detaining him there was nothing of that sort um and i believe I so even greek culture 101 it says hey that's when i came up when the security guards started approaching brent all right so let's he's about to recap what the security guard said remember him like asking if he could but i could be wrong there but he was just there was so much rambling coming out of him because the moment now Kirstie's already there. The security guard's already there. He's in full fight or flight mode, and instead he just chooses to stand still. Um, but then the cop continues to ask him about whether or not, you know, he's been filming. You know, he keeps denying it. And without moving forward, you know, like, or pushing, you know, the, the confrontation, the cop basically just goes, okay, like, we just want to create a safe atmosphere for our guests and for our, our celebrity guests you know what i mean both types and Chrissy then continues to go like yes we want just a safe environment we just want a happy atmosphere for the show and we don't want anyone feeling like they're being filmed or watched regardless of it being a one-party state brother if somebody was just doing that to me and i just didn't know it would just make me feel uncomfortable regardless of it being legal which it is sure it would just make me uncomfortable you know like who like would you like and this is this is AI, guys. <laughs> this is AI. This is not some cop at <laughs> Power Rangers. Uh, AI is a great tool. You should use it. Like that. It's a young Mike Bradley. If you're, like, you've got kids. There are kids yeah. all over the <laughs> oh, Don't we're right down. Daughter. Yeah, exactly. And we're right down the way from the kids zone. There are kids going everywhere. They actually made it so important that the kids zone be separate. That way, like, it was difficult for like a random person to like walk by and you know what I mean and just be there. So the idea of like this main hallway, there's so many kids here. That's my biggest concern more than anything is it's not even so much about just filming, you know, an actor saying something out of turn. I got kids around all over the place. You got concerned parents. Everyone just wants to have a good time. So that whole conversation feeling like it was like an attack on him was completely false. It was just not at all how he painted it. He very much made it seem like there he is, you know, eyes on target. Let's get him out of here. I can't speak for whether or not they actually sent a handicapped kid to go find him with like a wheelchair bound volunteer well. to find him. Or else. <laughs> the wheelchair guy is allegedly Karen Ashley's husband. He was not in a wheelchair in the slightest when I met him. Now, Karen, for, for all you don't know, Karen actually been married almost a decade now. Um, blissful married life. They got married March 22nd, 2014. This is like some public syndication. I only know him as Karen Ashley's husband. Uh, that, that's just what it is. He stood up. We shook hands. He, this was the first time he's actually ever been at a Ranger Shop show. Cause I talked with her and him on setup and homie was walking around. Not to say that, you know, you can't have pre-existing conditions that require you to sit later on, but I would find it very weird that, I don't know, that she would send him to do this and all of a sudden he has a wheelchair. There wasn't even one at her table, which if he needed to sit down, there were other chairs, but I don't know. That was weird. 
Um, so that was just the, the Brett situation in its, in its entirety from what I saw. Now, obviously, I have information on the. All right. Now, I know y'all like, hey, this is all hearsay, guys. What you think he was going to give me like a, a video recording of this? Everything has been hearsay. Brent's hearsay. Stephanie's hearsay. Greek culture hearsay. Uh, but the issue with this is not too many people are willing to speak up, you know, um, but and here we go. <laughs> Here's Francis. Uh, but Brent's stories are all hearsay, but people are believing it. Hey, hey, what, what do you what do you guys expect? You, you thought I had like a video? Trust me. Trust me. If I had a video recording, that'd be great. If I could get like a like a, a Christie interview, that'd be great. If I can get a Mike Bradley interview, that would be even better uh, because, you know, he was there. And let me see. Um, no, no. Uh, let me. A few moments later. I don't know what's going on here. So right. we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to reschedule this because it was a whole 12 minute video about your encounter. And I'm not about to rehash. So, oh, do people think it's a lie? Because I saw the, the headline. Did they, they think I'm lying? Yeah, but you didn't watch the oh, video. Really? You, uh, uh, oh, really? You're not about to react to a video that you didn't, you didn't even watch. you just about to say, hey, I'm telling the truth. What are people saying? Um, Brent, and I you, could, got, you, got, you got to go watch the video, man. It's 12 minutes. And I heard, I know you were back there for 12 minutes where you easily could have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was, um, I'm in the airport, so I, I, but I wasn't really fully paying attention to what was going on. So it's okay. There will be another time. So Brent didn't watch the video. I'm not about to rehash it. It'll come out at 10 or you can rewatch the stream. But people are saying you're embellishing. Oh, really? And oh, you're, okay. And you're name dropping me at cons without being axed. Name dropping you at cons. Is that true? Uh, you, and you're resilient. Yeah. Your, your content. I mean, yeah. Um, so, is, is that a bad thing? I mean, I, I've, I've done that before. I, I think, I don't know why. Is that a, a negative? I'm just reporting the facts. The facts yeah, are, yeah. when she approached you, you name dropped Henry Resilient. Is that a true, is that a true statement? When Christy approached uh, you, did you bring up Hidden Resilient or did she bring it up? Well, um, yeah, I, I, I brought you up. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, not, I, not in a bad way, I mean, but I don't know why. But did you know I was banned when you brought me up? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. All right. Well, let me just drop you down for a second, Brent. Let me just drop you okay. down. All right. <laughs> oh my God, guys. Oh my God. Do you guys see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? Now, hold on. Let, let's get this straight. Let's get this straight. Get your. Sorry. Got to go full screen. Think about this, right? Brent's at a con. He knows I'm banned. He probably knows the person who banned me or probably has a general idea. Talking to the woman and says, hey, I'm one of the guys, the, the guy who you guys made sure was absolutely 100 percent banned. I know him. I go to his channel or whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this gives the vendor story 100 percent credibility when he's like, yes, he brought you up, not her. She had no idea what it was. And once that he brought up the Henry Resilient, that's when she went back to go get security. Uh, so the people with the vendor story, right? The vendor was telling the 100% truth about the interaction. Now y'all like, no, 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 I was there, I was there. Not, and Brent left now, he's gone. He's gone. Maybe the Wi-Fi cut out. Uh, but now you see the vendor story. I'm sure Brent is pissed. I'm like, bro. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. I I was about to go to bed, but I can't believe he did that. I can't. Uh Francis uh Francis is back, guys. Uh this is this is unheard of. This is unheard of. Who 
does that? First of all, I've never been speechless until now. <laughs> I think I might have passed out laughing and then we awoke. For everyone that's saying, oh, this is hearsay, this is hearsay, <laughs> right? Brent just confirmed that the vendor wasn't lying, correct? In the When he originally brought this whole thing to light, he never once meant, said he mentioned you. He never once said he knew you were banned. What do you think is going to happen if you mention someone that is basically not wanted at Enemy a show? number one. Enemy number one. I'm not. A, so that means he watched the band video. They knew I couldn't come on the property. They knew that, hey, the police, they were on high alert. So on the last day, you talk into the, the, like the vendor said, it was a casual conversation. She didn't target him. They just bump shoulders. She's talking to him. He says Henry resilient. Her, she puts the pieces together. And then she's like, oh, we got to go get security to talk to. And then it makes sense why then if he talked to Christy first, then someone, Christy might have been like, yo, Karen, this guy, homeboy over here is mentioning um, public enemy number one. Like, and that's when Karen was like, enough is enough. I don't like Karen. Y'all know that. Um, but now everything seems plausible that he brought this on himself. And like I've said also, every, when, when stories have a lot of holes in them, it, it's because something's not being said, because something's being omitted, something that he says um, that if he would say it would make him look bad, which obviously saying he name dropped Henry Resilient <laughs> is an issue. And I bet you he did it with David. He probably went to David, went fine, did the video, came back the second time, was fine, name dropped you, clicked on David's head like, isn't that the guy that's been doing all this stuff? Shit, I mentioned this Walter thing. Hey, security, I don't feel comfortable with this guy. He's fidgety. He's name dropping this you this YouTuber that you know is very controversial. Sorry, Henry. Um, <laughs> let me. Uh, I need you guys. I don't feel comfortable coming up to him, but you got please. Have so him here's the thing, him. guys. People send me recordings of these Power Rangers that they're getting at cons, and I, I put them out there. And he goes up to her. Mind you, I'm public enemy number one. And everyone knows I get these recordings. So he goes up to her thinking like, hey, I defend these people on Henry Resilience channel, thinking that it's about to gain him some good grace and favor. When all it does is sets off the radar in her mind that, hey, this guy could be working with the guy who is blocked from the con. Because if I'm her, that's what I'm thinking 100%. 100%. Hey, Mama, you, she's not in this world. She's not in the PR. She's world, not I'm on sure. YouTube. She's not on YouTube. But she's <laughs> hearing this. Like, imagine going to a convention. From what I was told, they had been talking about banning you. It was not a. It was not a hundred percent concrete until apparently these screenshots came out, right? <laughs> and. I think it, it the screenshots were just used, and that's why when people were like this, that Joy Renata is a snitch and blah, blah blah. No, I think they use them. They use these screenshots to just have a reason to ban you without giving you the importance, without admitting that they're pressed by you, right? <laughs> so then they use these screenshots as a thing. But what, like, imagine going to someone and be like, yeah, I know this Henry Resilient guy, um, this controversial YouTuber. <sighs> Run it so far. It's, 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 well, it's that's, his, that's his claim to fame that he comes on the channel. So that's exactly. what makes people want to and talk to him. That's what I'm telling you. I've heard from sources. He said that he was never on Austin's table. And I've heard from sources that are very credible, that have nothing to gain, have nothing, they don't even like I'm not saying that they don't like you. I'm saying that they just don't like the controversial stuff. They're like, yeah, dude, dude, Brent was in, in Austin's table showing them, showing him and his minions, his phone and all that. Ooh. So come on. Like, Another allegation. 
it's an allegation. Of course, they don't have proof. Brent says, uh, simply Melissa says, watching from the hospital, told y'all Brent ain't ish. Damn. And yeah, I did and drop him down because he didn't watch the video. He had he had more than 12 minutes to watch the video. He knows about it. He could have went back in the stream. But this is what he does every time. Oh, I don't know what's he's going saying, on. He's saying I was dropped by, down by Henry. Yeah, he I was. I have named up Stop. Henry before. And yes, he probably has name dropped you with Karen. But you have been blowing Karen's back in. <laughs> I've been kicking for, that shit in. <laughs> kicking that shit in with the order, with the money. Have my bag and run. You have, a, you have a song. Like, do you really think that she wants to be hearing your name when she stresses how running a show? It's not easy to run a con. And she's also she has to be a hostess. She has to be also have a table to make money. Because let's be honest, that's how she makes money. Plus run the show. Plus then she got to be hearing about this. YouTuber that she says ain't nobody and she hears you're awful, but I don't understand how you, you know what I mean? It's just everything on her. Of course, he egged it on. I like, that's like me walking in to a Austin St. John cult and being like, <laughs> Henry and I be dropping bombs talking shit about Austin. <laughs> oh, man. So now it's like... <sighs> So now, Henry, what do you, what do you think about the situation, Henry Resilient? I think it was uh, one. No one really asked me what I think, um, but uh, it's not I mean, smart. Well. It's not smart to go in an event where you know that hey, this person is banned. He's the number one banned target. Uh, we hate him. Uh, we don't want him on the we don't want him on the property. Uh, he's on our number one on our hit list. Number page number one. And then for you to tell the person who run who's running the ban list, who's running all the volunteers, that yes, I go well, on Henry probably was the one that told everybody like, don't let this man in. If you see him, let us know. I <laughs> go on the guy who is banned from this event on his channel to defend you guys, and she doesn't know this. She doesn't know Brent from a can of paint. So that's where the accusations come from because he wanted some cool points. For going on the on the channel defending him, and he got looked at as suspect number one as my eyes and ears for the recordings. That, in all honesty, I don't get them from him. There is someone else uh, that yeah, does but, it, but, but it's, it's not him. Again, you have them pressed as hell, right? So of course, now nah, I mean, 